Want to see something really creepy? Then follow me. We're headed to the Munster's house. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today's episode is part one of the Munster's house. We're going to see the entryway, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and the back hallways. You won't want to miss it. Before we start, I have a bit of a warning for you. Try as I might, I was not able to get cobwebs into the Munster home. And I tried everything. I tried for days. My computer program just isn't able to do it in any kind of believable way. So my apologies to those of you who, like me, really wanted to see cobwebs in the Munster's home. However, I do have some other nice surprises waiting for you. So let's get going. Before we enter the home, I want to show you an overhead view of the house to help you understand the layout better. Here's the entryway. On one side is a bench and the other a closet. And then we step down into the foyer. In the hallway on this side of the stairs is where they kept their coffin phone booth. Further down that same hallway is another closet. I also gave the Munsters a half bath back there, even though we never saw one on the show. I figured they could use one. This huge room was never shown. It was large enough to be a ballroom, but that didn't seem to fit the Munsters, so I chose to make it a library. That's something I could picture them having. The hallway on this side of the stairs leads back to the kitchen and connects to the hallway on the other side. On the left side of this floor plan is the large living room. In this corner is the trap door that leads to Grandpa's dungeon, and you'll get to see his dungeon in part two of the Munsters' home next episode. Behind the living room is the dining room, and there's a passageway from the dining room into the kitchen. Now that you have the general layout, let's head back over to the main foyer. As you look around the foyer, you'll see the coffin phone booth off to the right. You can see that long ribboned tassel hanging beside it that they would pull to open and close the casket phone booth. The phone booth changed a lot over the series, often just from episode to episode. Sometimes it had a window and sometimes it didn't. The handles changed completely and the inside of it changed too. It was a magical coffin booth in more ways than one. At the end of the hallway is a closet door. We got to see what's inside one time when Eddie was looking for something. In episode 10, Autumn Crocus, we learn a lot about this back area of the house. We find out there's another hallway behind the stairs because we see Herman take that way to get from one side to the other. Let's follow Herman and see what's back there. These are views we never got to see on the show. We also see a woman open the doorway at the end of this side of the hallway and we see a china cabinet on a wall back there beside the big entrance into the kitchen. Let's have a quick look around the entryway before we go on. See if you can spot anything from the show that's hiding. Kinda hard not to spot spot there under the stairs, huh? Hope he didn't scare you. Now we're gonna head over to the living room. This is probably the most well-known part of the home as so many scenes were filmed here. We never got to see all of this bay window wall over here though, only small portions of it, because that's where the cameras often were. But this main part of the living room, we're very familiar with it. Here's where Grandpa's electric chair was, one of his great finds at the penitentiary surplus store, we're told. And then there's the unique, antiquated piano. Never seen one quite like it. And the cuckoo clock with the wise cracking raven that would often pop out to say things like, nevermore. This corner had the door that leads down to Grandpa's dungeon. 
and on this side was Lily's harp. And then there's that iconic fireplace. Here are some things that took place in this main room. Lily serving Russian tea from a Chinese pot, playing with toys, including a medieval weapon, practicing ballet, magic tricks, building a ship in a bottle and cheating just a little, a doctor making a house call on Herman, pronouncing him dead when he feels no pulse, and then running away when Herman sits up and begins to speak, feeding the piranha, building a robot, a little light reading, kissing Eddie and Woof Woof goodnight, and just gathering around as a family. I'm going to give you a little tour of just the living room now, and later we'll get to walk through the entire main floor. As you walk through the living room, keep your eye out for a couple Easter eggs. Those are little items from the show. Did you find both of them? It was Grandpa's magical floating checkers and the umbrella and golf balls from when Herman practiced a new swing in the living room. The dining room went through some major changes too. Early on, in episode 6, there was actually a window along this wall. But soon after, that wall became a fireplace wall and no windows were shown in the room. But I went ahead and added some windows over here on this wall, the wall we never got to see in the dining room, again because that's where the cameras were. Some things that took place in the dining room. Herman dieting. Grandpa reading his Transylvania Gazette. Grandpa's date trying to poison him. Sausages making their way across the table all by themselves and Herman and Grandpa hatching plans. Now we'll have a little glance around the room before we enter the kitchen. We're going to enter the kitchen through this door. On the show we often saw them carrying dishes headed to the kitchen this way, but we never got to follow them through the door into the kitchen. We see people enter the kitchen from three different ways. From the second set of stairs, from the dining room, and from the hallway. Even though the family was living in the 60s, they had, shall we say, a lack of conveniences. We see an old wood stove, an ice box rather than a refrigerator, and an antique iron on the stove, not to mention that boiler next to the cupboards. But Lily never seemed to mind and she loved cooking. We often saw her standing at the stove serving up something good and sometimes unusual. Some things that took place in this kitchen. Candle making, reading joke books, entertaining relatives, feeding the cat, Herman presenting Lily with some lovely weeds, and ordinary things like washing dishes and monstery things like Eddie hanging out in the kitchen cupboards or sliding down poles to come to breakfast. And of course, there was always Spot breaking things like windows and slithering out the back door. Now we'll do a little sweep of the kitchen, be looking for two Easter eggs from the show. Did you spy them? They were Herman's joke book and a bottle of ketchup with a straw in it as we saw Grandpa drinking from on the show. Now we're going to have a walk through the main floor. No Easter eggs this time. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the Munster Mansion.
I had so much fun doing the Munsters home. In some ways more fun than I've done recreating any other TV or movie home because I got to add all these spooky, creepy elements that wouldn't normally be in a house. It was just fun. But as I modeled it, also I could see the incredible bones of this home. The Munster Mansion is amazing. And I wanted to see a tour of it, walking through with it in color, but also without all of the macabre. So I took away, I did a tour and it's coming up and it's for those of you who want to see that. And I took away things like the missing plaster chunks on the wall and I straightened the pictures and got rid of the electric chair, things like that. If you want to see that, hang around. However, I've been doing this now for a little over a year, recreating TV and movie homes. And I've discovered there is a section of people who are huge fans of the shows that do not adamantly do not want to see these homes in any other version than exactly the way we saw them on the show. And I get that because it kind of housed our memories too. So if you're one of those people that seeing it in color and without all of the spooky creepy things, you're going to get grumpy because of that, then you need to stop watching right now. This is your warning, and you'll come back to us next episode when we do part two of the Munster Home. And we're gonna go upstairs and see the bedrooms, even Marilyn's, and we're gonna go below the house and see Grandpa's dungeon. But remember, you've been warned. If you choose to keep watching right now and it makes you mad, that's on your shoulders. Okay, now that that's out of the way, those of you who want to stick around, we're going to go through the Munster Mansion now without all this spooky stuff and in color. Enjoy. If you liked that, if you loved exploring the actual design of the Munsters home, then you might like another show I have on this YouTube channel called Cinematically Inspired Design. And what we do there is we explore the design principles from the cinema that make us fall in love with those movie homes and we learn how to bring those same principles into our own homes. There's a reason you fall in love with movie homes. Come find out why. If you like today's episode and you don't want to miss any future episodes, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. And if you want to see the other TV and movie homes I've created, you can find them right here on my YouTube channel, but also on my website, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll put all those links down below so you can find them in the description. But as for today, that's all. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.